Hi, welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor for Wet Pixel, and we'd like to thank Salaya Beach Houses for sponsoring this episode. Um, Salaya Beach Houses have a wonderful resort in Dumaguete. It's a Black Zan macro destination in uh, in the Philippines. Um, it's a wonderful place to stay for for shooting with cockatoos. Um, it also, by the way, has some wonderful wide angle um, opportunities about as well. So you can check them out at salayabeachhouses.com. Um, and Salaya is spelled S A L A Y A beachhouses.com or well beach houses all one word. Um, so check them out. I'm, I'm very happy to be joined by my friend Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so. Um, I thought, well, on the forums, where Pixel Forums, obviously a great source of information for all underwater image makers. Um, and one of the questions that perennially has always and continues to crop up is are on the subject of dome ports. And really, you know, obviously there's a wide variety of dome ports and particularly people possibly early on imagine that they're all the same and you just use a dome port and bolt it on. So I, I thought I'd ask Alex, in the, and I know Alex has a bunch of dome ports, and I thought I'd ask Alex very briefly, um, why have you got so many big expenses, big expensive spherical pieces of glass lying around? Go on here, look. There we um, are. Yeah, this is actually a relatively small one. This is a 170 as M1. Um, really, because I think the the most you know valuable pictures we can take underwater are wide angle pictures, hmm. and most and you really can't take wide angle pictures more simply underwater than using a dome port. Um, if you don't use a dome port, you are limiting yourself to how wide a view you can shoot, and you are creating a lot of optical problems. Now, as you'll see on other wet pixel episodes, there are other solutions to dome ports, such as water contact lenses, but they are more expensive, more complicated. And the dome port is a very simple, elegant solution that allows a wide angle lens to see wide underwater. Yep. If you put a wide angle lens behind a flat window and try and take a wide angle picture underwater, the angle of that lens is heavily restricted. Yep. Um, and as a result, you don't get that wide view. And wide views are incredibly important for underwater photography. You only have to watch our recent fisheye episode to tell how, how important those things are. So absolutely. a yeah. dome port is absolutely critical to your imaging system underwater. And actually getting the right one has a far bigger impact on your image quality than buying an expensive camera or buying an expensive lens. This is where the image quality comes by getting the right one. Um, and it's not necessarily about expense. It's about having the right one for what you want. Yep. So, um, but as a general rule, bigger is better optically than, 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 than smaller. However, your need, how big you need to go does depend a lot on the system you're using and the lens you're using. So it is not a simple answer, which is, I guess, why the question comes up again and again. Absolutely. Because yeah. one person's perfect dome port if, might be totally different from someone else's using a different camera system and a different lens. Yep. Um, but those general rules still apply that bigger is generally better than smaller. How big you need to go depends on the lens and the system you're using. Um, but bigger is more expensive than smaller. Oh, so just the final issue that comes up is the construction in that some dome ports are made of glass and some are made of acrylic. Um, the glass ones are more hard wearing mm. and uh, I think I would say typically a more reliable high quality. Mm. But the good acrylic or plastic ones work just as well, but they are less hard wearing, more easily scratched. And if you do put a big scratch in them, you can polish them out. But unless you polish them well, you're then beginning down the path of making them less and less good over time. Yep. Uh, but I know some of the very best underwater photographers in the world who prefer acrylic ones to glass, but yep. I would say the majority of really serious players use glass dome ports. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the other, it's worth mentioning, and I mean, without wanting to get too drawn to specific, into specifics, but the bigger the sensor on your camera, the bigger dome port you need to consider. And, and actually, you've got to factor this in with the fact that, you know, everything, when you go to full frame, um, everything gets more expensive. Your lenses become more expensive. Your housing tends to become bigger and therefore more expensive. And I'm afraid in line with that, your dome port is going to do the same thing. Mm. And they're really, you know, you really start seeing a lot of the problems with the dome port when you go to high resolution full frame cameras 
And um, so, so it, in many ways, you know, if you're starting out and you've got a relatively small sensor camera, a crop sensor camera, or micro four thirds, or, or or something like that, you can definitely get away with smaller dome points. And and in fact, you know, you probably won't really see the difference. The difference comes in. So, so it's very specific to the type of camera that you're 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 planning to use. Um, um, the, the other issue that I think we probably should mention as well is, is that the secondary issue, dome ports are very important, but actually the spacing that um, you have the lens to the between the lens and the front of the port is really important as well. And getting the lens in the right place uh, or the dome port in the right place in front of the lens, possibly the way around. And that's something that um, is not as as obvious as it may seem you don't just bolt a dome port on the front and it will work actually that distance is really really important um, and so so that's something that obviously we're fortunate the manufacturers do a lot of the testing for us but if you're looking at an esoteric lens combination possibly because you own a lens and you plan to put it you know have an existing lens you want to put it on dome port the only way really you find out what that optimum distance is is by testing it and and that's a relatively complicated process because you've got to add and subtract um, extensions until you find the right length but also it, it, the wrong the, the right dome with the right lens and the wrong extension is as bad as the wrong dome <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you're, you're, you're giving away that optical quality again and it will make a significant difference to your pictures it, it's certainly a very common mistake that you see with new people to underwater photography mm. is they'll buy a very fancy mirrorless or full or slr full frame camera They'll buy an expensive, typically 1635 wide angle lens, mm. and then they'll buy a small dome port and the lens will be sticking right the way in or just behind the dome. Yeah. And they are losing so much of the optical quality of their system. And yeah. they've spent all the money and the thing they're missing is the right port extension to fit behind here, which is a fraction of the money they've spent. You know, you're talking 2% yeah, yeah, yeah. of the price of the rest of the gear yeah, yeah. they're missing and they're throwing away 60 70 percent of the image quality of their system so yeah. the other thing to is this is important to understand with dome ports is dome ports elegantly and simply solve two of the big problems of underwater images they allow the lens to see widely and they solve the issue of particularly of chromatic aberration and pin cushion distortion of a flat port which is mm. great the problem that they introduce is that they create an image that goes soft in the corners of the frame and I won't explain the optics behind it in this short video but what you do need to understand as a photographer is you need to keep your aperture of your lens reasonably closed down so that you have enough depth of field to stop those corners going soft mm -hmm. and I think that is the other big mistake people make when they start out with dome ports is they have all the right gear but they don't realize how important it is to shoot all the right settings yeah. and the important setting is always the aperture when you're using a dome port and you really need that kind of go-to aperture. And if you are a full-frame photographer shooting with a dome port, you need an aperture in double figures, yeah. you know, as, a, as an absolute starter place. If you can shut it down a bit more than that, great. So what I'm doing, you know, is at least F10, yeah. ideally F11, F13 is better. Yeah. Um, and then even more if you, if, you, if you can, if you've got enough light. If you are a crop sensor SLR or crop sensor mirrorless shooter, you really need to be F8 to F10. Yeah. And if you're a micro four thirds, maybe F7 to F8 yeah. to get the best out of a dome port or more shut down. You can't just jump in with your lens set at F4, F2.8, F5.6 and expect to get good optical quality with a dome port because it does two things really, really well, but its weakness is that it creates these blurry corners and its depth of field shutting your aperture down that solves that problem. Yeah, yeah, and and I think this is a you know part of the mental mindset, and this is something that you know experienced land photographers often don't get initially. Is you know we're going to use very slow shutter speeds potentially or compared to land, um, and and we're going to use very high ISOs in order to maintain that aperture. You know, so so aperture getting those corners relatively sharp takes precedence over other issues. So we might accept levels of noise in an image, for example, that, that, that landscape photographers wouldn't be happy accepting, um, but we do that in order to get an aperture, or we might be prepared to handhold at relatively sh slow shutter speeds in order to achieve the same effect. Mm -hmm. So so it's important to bear in mind that once we go to a dome port, 
you know, we have to maintain an aperture, and that's we do that by using our other exposure controls. Um, and that's yeah, and if different. you have a cruise around, you know, on Instagram or on Facebook, you know, and people are sharing their camera settings for their wide angles, mm. um, you know, look at the work of the good photographers and try to understand those settings. You'll see that they're shooting, if they're shooting with, a, say, a full-frame camera, they're often shooting f11, f13, f16 range of aperture and that's all about your about maintaining that corner sharpness and then the other settings are about balancing the light mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah wonderful thank you alex i think that's that's really really useful um and um yeah so um and i'd like to thank um Salaya Beach Houses again for supporting us by sponsoring this episode. Really appreciate their support. Please feel free to drop any comments or questions possibly about uh, Dome Points and we'll, we'll try and answer them in future episodes in the comment section. And drop a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.